And good morning. Thank you for joining the Come As You Are Ministries once again on another great and beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has allowed us to live to see. We thank you, as always, for all of your continued prayers. We thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Um, at this particular time, we're going to get right into what God has for us because we want to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. So we're looking at Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And it reads, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was calm, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto, the, unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, Bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, whereof didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you once again for another great and glorious opportunity to come before this, your people. And Lord, as always, we ask you to hide us behind the cross where they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory and the honor and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Lord God, help us to keep our eyes and mind focused on you. Lord God, that we may be able to hear a word from you today. Because, Father God, in this day and time, we really need a true word from you. Father God, just speak right now. We pray that you will bless this word to go out and accomplish that which you sent it out to accomplish and will not return home. Bless our time here, O Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to talk to you for a little while from the subject. You better keep your eyes on Jesus. You better keep your eyes on Jesus. In our lives, we tend to allow so much to distract us from the most important thing, and that's serving God. We allow everything that's going on in the world to distract us. We allow jobs, children, spouses, and even family members and friends to distract us from serving God. We spend more time worrying about this person and that person and what they're doing, and we forget who holds the world in his hand. We forget that God was the one that blessed you with the job. We forget that God was the one that blessed you with the spouse and the children. We tend to put the blessing before the blessing. God provides our every needs and more. So why not put him first in each and everything you do? We must learn to pay more attention to God and not all and not what's going on around us. We must learn to pray more and keep our focus on God's word, his will, and his way. Because when we put our focus on God, he will take care of everything else that's going on around us. He will lead and guide you into the right direction. But you got to stay focused on him. You got to keep watching and listening. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 37 and 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. In other words, church, when our focus is on God, he will lead, guide, and direct your path. He will put you on the right path of life. Some of us take our eyes off God because we want to run this show. And that's most of us. We, we feel like this is my life. I can do what I want. I can go where I want, say what I want. And the fact of the matter is you trying to run your life is actually what's messing you up. I've come to learn and understand that McNeil's way is not always the right way. The direction that McNeil wants to go in may not line up with what God wants you to do. 
So you got to make sure that your plans and God's plan line up. If they don't line up, then that means your focus is off. That means you trying to do what you want to do and not what God wants you to do. I can do it on my own. That's what we think. I don't need nobody's help. But I need you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we can't do nothing without God. We can't live, eat, or breathe without him. That's why I love that old song that says, without God, I can do nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be rugged like a ship without a sail. So we need God for everything. That's why the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So when we keep our focus on God, he will give you the strength to do his will. He will give you just what you need and equip you to do what he's called for you to do. So each and every day, we must keep your eyes and mind steadfast on him. We must stay focused on the master. We must stop allowing what we are dealing with and what we are facing to take our focus off God. And you say, well, Reverend, what do you mean by that? The biggest problem with us is we tend to focus on the other stuff and not God. We tend to get focused on what's going on at work. We tend to get focused on what's going on in the news. We tend to get focused on everything else but God. And my thing is, he's the one that can take care of all this other stuff. We get so focused on the bills and we get so caught up till we get upset and we get stressed out and we're going through. And the fact of the matter is, it's not about the bill. Keep your focus on God. We get so upset when we look at the bank account and the bank account ain't the way you want it to be. The bank account is not the one that's holding you. It's God that's holding you. We get so frustrated because we see how things are in this world. But I understand that, you know what? God has it all in control. Not me, not Congress, not the president. God has it all under control. So God's going to make sure that I have everything I need. Why? He said he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Great God Almighty. We, we got to understand and know that it has nothing to do with everybody else. It's all about God. God is the one that's going to take care of you. If you keep your focus on him, you got to have a real relationship with God. We can't weather the storms of life without God. We need him to stand and to strengthen us in these last and evil days. When problems come, we tend to focus on the problems and less on the problem solver. What does that mean? We tend to focus on the health issues, but we don't realize that you need to be focusing on Jesus. Why? He is the healer. We tend to focus on everything that we're going through, but we don't focus on the one that can fix it all. The one that can take care of it all. That's the one you need to be focused on. That's the one you need to be talking to. But we spend more time focused on everything else. We spend more time trying to talk to our friends. We spend more time calling the psychic hotline. We spend more time wondering why the president is not doing this. We spend more time worrying about why the governor is not doing what he needs to do. It's not important. You need to stay focused on the master. The he is the one. He's the one that's going to take care of it all. He's the one that's going to get you through these trying times. But we spend more time, even in this pandemic right now, we spend more time upset because they're not doing this, upset because folks are doing that, upset because the president hadn't done this, upset because Congress won't do that, but not today. You need to stop and start focusing on God. Don't worry about what they're doing. God's going to fix it. You got to understand, God will hold you and keep you in the hollow of his hand. He will keep you. I don't care, church, what you're going through. God is able to do anything but fail. So stop focusing on your sickness and focus on God who has all power in his hand. Stop focusing on your mental issues and remember that in Isaiah 26 and 3, he said, God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. So you better keep your eyes on God. In our text, we see that the disciples were on a ship and Jesus came up walking on the water and they didn't even recognize who Jesus was. They, they were afraid. But Jesus told him, don't be afraid, it is I. We must learn to recognize when the Lord shows up. Because when the Lord shows up, you'll know because your healing will come. Your deliverance will come. You will be set free. 
When he shows up, demons got to flee. Great God Almighty. When he shows up, sickness got to get out the way. When he shows up, he'll turn your life around. So when they realize, <laughs> when they realize it was Jesus, Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come out to you out on the water. Jesus said, come on. So Peter stepped out of the boat onto the water. What we must understand, my brothers and sisters, when we keep our eyes on God, we are able to do things that we thought or we were told that we couldn't do. People will tell you that you will never be nothing. They will tell you you will never accomplish anything in life. But as long as I keep pressing, like Philippians 3 and 14 said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. Everything will be all right. So as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was okay. He was able to walk on the water. The thing was, when Peter stepped out the boat, Peter stepped out on faith. And a lot of us, we step out on faith, but somewhere along the line, we get lost. Somewhere along the line, we lose our focus. Some of us, even as pastors, we're wondering why sometimes our churches are not going in the direction that they're supposed to go in. It's probably because somewhere along the line, somebody has gotten off track. And sometimes it's us. We need to check ourselves. We're so busy trying to check the people, but sometimes we need to check ourselves and make sure that we're still on focus that we're still on court with what God has for us. We need to make sure that we're still on the plane that God has put us on because sometimes we tend to get the big head. Even in life, we tend to get the big head and we forget that it was God that brought us to where we are. Some of us, because we got all of these fancy degrees, we think that we did it on our own. But baby, I stopped by to tell you this morning, you didn't do it on your own. Yeah, you might have stayed up all night studying, but it was God that gave you the strength to stay up all night to study. Yeah, you might have been the one that walked across that stage, but if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, you would have never gotten that degree and you would still be where you were if it wasn't for the Lord. There are a lot of college degrees sleeping out on the street right now. There are a lot of college degrees sleeping in shelter right now. Why? Because if you don't stay focused on God, you'll lose course. You'll get off track. And a lot of us in life, we've gotten off track. And we wonder why things are just not going right. We wonder why we're scared of having problems at home. We wonder why we're scared of having problems on the job. We're wondering why the checks are getting smaller, but they keep adding more work on you. It's because somewhere along the line, we've lost focus. And now we're focusing on the problems at home. Now we're focusing on the bills. Now we're focusing on the bank account. Now we're focusing on our sickness. Now we're focusing on our limitations. And the more you keep focusing on the wrong thing, things are not going to work out. Why? Because you're trying to fix it. I've learned in life, if I just take my hands off of it, God will take care of everything else. But I just got to move out the way. A lot of us don't know how to get out of the way. We like to run the show. And because you're trying to run the show, it's not working out right. There's only room in life for one director, and that's God. There's only room in life for one. Not to. Just him. He will direct your life if you will allow him to. I had to learn in going through this situation that I'm going through. I had to realize, Mike, you done lost focus somewhere. That's the reason why stuff is not panning out. You're so busy worried about the fact that I'm limited on this and I can't do this and I can't do that. But you need to keep your focus on God. Because when you keep your focus on God, he'll take care of all the limitations. He'll show you that you can do some stuff that you didn't even think you could do anymore. He'll show you that you can get to know him in a better light if you keep your focus on him. He'll show you that, yeah, when you read, you'll begin to understand a little bit more if you keep your focus on him. You say, well, Reverend, it's been two years. Yeah, I know it's been two years, but the fact that the matter is even in that, as you notice that, I never stop preaching. Why? Because I keep my focus on him. Some folks don't understand how I'm able to do it. It's because of him. Some people are not going to understand how you're able to do the things that you do in life. It's because you keep your eyes and mind steadfast on him. As we look at this text a little bit more, he was able to walk on the water as long as he stayed focused on God. 
But Peter did like so many of us. We get caught up in what's going on around us that we take our focus off Jesus. When Peter took his eye off Jesus, he began to sink. The reason why so many of us miss what God has for us is because we are so focused on the other thing that's going on or what's going wrong. When we go to church, the reason why we can't get out of the sermon what we're supposed to get out of it is because we're so busy worried about what somebody else is wearing. We're so busy worried about what somebody else is doing that we can't focus and get what God has for us. We're so worried about the fact that the choir didn't sing the song that we wanted them to sing. So we're so focused on that and so upset that we can't even get out of the word what we need to get out of it. We're so mad that when we drove up on the parking lot, somebody was parked in our favorite parking space. Why is that even important? You came to church to hear the word of God, not worry about what everybody else has got going on. And sometimes it's so hard because there's so many clicks in the church. It's so hard to focus. You so busy wondering what this person's saying about me, how this person feels about me. Baby, ain't none of that important. Get what God has for you and go on. Don't worry about what everybody else got going on. Don't worry about how they feel. Why? Because they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Some of us are so constrained by folk, we won't even shout in church. The reason being is because we worried about what somebody else is going to say or how they're going to feel or they're going to talk about me tomorrow. It doesn't matter, baby. They're talking about you now and you ain't shouting. So what you think? They're going to still talk about you no matter what you do. So keep your focus on God. Shout in the midst of their faith. Shout when they don't want you to shout. Praise God no matter what because he is the one that will take care of it all. He's the one going to fix it. We get distracted because the deacon prayed too long. But if you probably should have been listening to the prayer, he was probably praying for something that you needed anyway. But we so busy, he prayed too long. I don't know why he stayed up there. It doesn't matter. Get what God has for you. And because of all of those distractions, you miss what God has for you. We have to learn to pay more attention to the word and less to the people. We have to learn to focus on the one that can fix what's broken in your life. But what I love about Jesus is that even when we mess up, even when we take our eyes off of him, even when we do things that we're not supposed to do, even when we go in the wrong direction, even when we get the big head and think that we got it all figured out and we don't need nobody and we don't need Jesus, even in the midst of all of that, he is right there to pick you up when you fall. He will always hear you when you call his name. So when you fall in this old life, just learn to look up. Why do you say that, Reverend? Because the Bible says in Psalms 121 and 2, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help. All of my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. In other words, he is always there when I need him. All I have to do is call on his name. All Peter had to do was call on Jesus, and Jesus reached down and picked him up. I don't care where you've fallen. I don't care how far you've fallen. I don't care what you did. I don't care where you went. I don't care how bad it might seem. Jesus will pick you up if he have to reach way down. He is able to deliver. All you got to do is call on him. Have you ever been in a car accident and everything was just going away? And it seemed like you just wasn't going to get out of it. But when you call on Jesus, he turned that thing around. He fixed it just for you. People couldn't understand how you walked away without a scratch. People didn't understand how you walked away and the car was just totally demolished. It was all because of Jesus. And I want you to understand and know that no matter what you're dealing with, he's able to fix it. So I stopped by to let you know this morning, my brothers and my sisters, to, to let you know that you must keep your eyes and mind on Jesus. He will carry you through. He will make a way out of nowhere. He will fix just what's broken in your life if you stay focused on him. He will lead you in the right direction if you just keep your eyes steadfast on him. He will take care of whatever problem, whatever circumstances, whatever folk trying to do to you. He'll take care of it all if you just keep your focus on him. I'm learning each and every day. Mike, stop focusing on everything else that's going on around you. Keep your focus on him. He'll take care of it all. I promise you he will. If you just keep your eyes and mind steadfast on him. Well, Reverend, that's hard. That's, that's a hard thing to do. I got problems at home. I got problems at work. 
Reverend, you just don't understand. I got sickness in my body. I'm dealing with mental issues. Reverend, you just don't understand. My children don't want to act right. The dog is crazy and running around in circles. You just don't understand. My paycheck is getting smaller, but my bills are getting bigger. Reverend, you just don't understand how bad it is. Yeah, I do understand how bad it is, but I know a father that cares. I know somebody that will take care of everything that you're going through. I know somebody that'll fix it. And all you got to do is move out of the way and put it in his hand. Y'all, let me get out of here. The clock on the wall said, that's all. It's been fun, but Reverend McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. And after a while, crap it down. But I'm going to leave you with this, this little story, and then I'm going to get out of the way. That was his late mother at church that would always come in shouting. Every Sunday, mother had a praise on her lips. Every single Sunday. Well, one Sunday... She came to church and her husband had died. And they said, well, oh, she's not going to be able to shout now. Her husband just died. She's going to be sad. She probably ain't going to even show up, but she did show up. And when she got there, she came through the door shouting. Everybody was looking confused and couldn't understand what was going on and why was she still shouting. So then the following week, her son died. They said, oh, no, she definitely ain't going to come in here shouting now. She just lost her, her husband, and now she just behind that. She done lost her son. Oh, no, she's not going to shout now. But early that Sunday morning, mother came right on in the door, praising and waving her hand and telling God how good he is. And I praise you, God, for all that you've done. They said, man, we just don't understand. So the following week, <laughs> mother, house burnt down. She lost everything she had. They said, well, she definitely ain't going to shout now. This lady done been through too much. She done lost her husband, lost her home, lost her son. There's no way mother gonna come in here shouting. But early that Sunday morning, mother came running in the door and she began to shout and get out there in the aisle and get on the good foot. And the pastor couldn't understand. It. He looked at it and said, Mother, why is it that you shouting like this? It's got to be something wrong with you that you come in here after all that you've been through and you still shout. And you still praise it. What is wrong with you? She said, Pastor, I'm not the one with the problem. You the one got the problem. Because the same God that you preach about every Sunday, the same God that you tell us to serve, the same God that you tell us we should be worshiping, the same God that you say we should be focused on, is the same God that's given me the strength to shout in the midst of my song. That's given me the strength to shout even though I've lost so much in life. He's given me the strength to shout in it why? Because I keep my eyes and mind steadfast on him. Because I know he will make a way out of no way. Because I know he will do anything but fail. She says, oh, Reverend, I'm not the one with the problem. I, if I do have a problem, it's because I love to praise my God. If I do got a problem, it's because I don't mind giving God the praise for all that he's done for me. I don't mind telling God, thank you for all of the stuff. That he brought me through. She says, so Reverend, if I got a problem, I got a problem of shouting. But you got a problem because you don't believe in what you preach. She said, but I know God is able and I know he will deliver. So I stopped by to tell somebody today, keep your eyes and mind focused on him. Don't worry about your problem. Don't worry about your situation. Don't worry about your sickness. God is able to do anything but fail. He has all power in his hand. And I promise you, he'll take care of whatever you got going on if you just keep your eyes and mind focused on him. Y'all be blessed.